The Undin represents the element of water and alchemy, transformed throughout generational folk tales into what we now call water nymphs, or mermaids. Paracelsus described them as an aquatic creature with the head of a human and the tail of a fish, but lacking a soul. Depicted mostly as female, consistent with the ancient Greek mentality that water is a feminine element. They are found in a variety of waters, from rushing rivers to tranquil ponds. Undin are believed to have beautiful singing voices, similar to the sirens in Greek mythology. Interestingly, Greek sirens were once pictured as bird-like, until the Christian era where they were contorted into having a more fish-like appearance. The Undin parallel a creature lurking in the lands between, known as the basilisk. They are found submerged in a variety of liquid locations, have fish-like features, and contain similar lore connections. First, the majority of basilisks are found in abundance near water-related locations, such as the Ansel River, Lake of Roth, and the subterranean Shunning Grounds. Second, their physical appearance includes webbed feet, fins, and scales. Webbed feet means having a flat piece of skin sitting between your toes to help push against the water for an easier movement. Fins are used to generate thrust and control that movement. Scales assist with movement too, as well as a general protection from predators, or to stop other organisms that may attempt to attach themselves to the aquatic creature, like parasites. Speaking of which, those large googly eyes on their head aren't actually their eyes at all. Their eyes are just above their mouth. Instead, the larger eyes, I believe, are Godwin's eyes growing out of them like a form of death root. Finally, in Japanese folklore, there is a creature similar to the Undine called a Ninjo, meaning human fish. There are some known to be male, and one is described as having a human head on a fish-like body. Now before you lies the origin of the death blight that the basilisks spew, Godwin, the demigod. Can you see the similarities between the Ningyo mentioned earlier and his physical appearance? Godwin used to be known as the Golden. Now, he is known as the Prince of Death in the Lands Between. He is alive in death, his soul destroyed during the Night of the Black Knives, leaving only his soulless body behind. Remember, being soulless is an attribute of Undins noted by Paracelsus. Heiris' hero's grave is where Godwin is buried. Basilisks reside inside to show their connection to both Godwin and death itself. The tomb is located on Lendale's outskirts and was built to honor a fallen champion. Underneath the grave sits the Prince of Death's throne in the deep root depths. The grave is guarded by two crucible knights, fierce warriors that once served Godwin's father. Another connection regarding folklore is that mermaids are sometimes associated with perilous events near water, including floods, storms, and drowning. The basilisks represent a form of death as well, as they spew death blight. The breath of death attack basilisks utilize mirrors a rare medical condition called congenital central hypoventilation syndrome, where the sufferers risk suffocation while sleeping due to a lack of autonomic breath control. This medical condition is known as Undine's Curse. The death blight attack they use on the tarnished will kill you as soon as the bar that appears reaches its max. After you are killed by death blight, a swarm of tiny insects appear around you. These insects are also found near Godwin's body. Zul the Witch mentioned that zooming into the blight reveals that there are small white spikes growing out of them, which, on closer inspection, are actually insect wings. These insects appearing instantly from nowhere aligns with another archaic belief called spontaneous generation, in which all things arose from the elemental nature of the universe, a perion, also known as the unbounded or infinite, basically the thought that life develops spontaneously from non-living matter. The philosopher Aristotle said that some creatures, like fleas and maggots, could simply manifest from non-living matter. Others thought that eels came from the waters of the Nile, or crocodiles were born from its mud. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you've had a wonderful time.